Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we've got ourselves a collector booster box of Kaldheim. This box contains 12 packs with 15 cards each. The set was released February 5th, 2021, and we're going to be doing pricing as of August 13th, 2022. Now, if you've been following the channel, you know that I purchased these off of Woot.com for $148 while they were on sale. Now, I picked up two of these boxes. They look to be fully sealed, fully intact, brand spanking new, no refurb, no return. Everything just looks totally fine on them. They came from the exact same case. So today we're going to go ahead and open up just one of these and see what kind of value we can get. Now, while I'm opening the box, I want to point out that this is a voiceover of the video. For some reason, when I was opening this box, Windows just decided not to record the audio. So I'm going back and kind of doing a little voiceover uh, for the opening. So for all of you who need that ASMR of the pack crinkle, I apologize. The, that will be back in the next video. So with that, let's go ahead and watch me open pack number one. Now, because I am doing a voiceover, I'm going to try and have a little bit more fun with this pack opening than usual. So we'll go through the commons one time. To start things off with a Story Seeker, a Battlefield Raptor, a Lecharja Skin Seekers, a Broken Wings, followed by a Feed the Serpent, an Icebind Pillar, a Frost Auger, then I think I found a card, but I didn't, and then we see a Snow-Covered Mountain, a Serpent Soul Jar coming in from Commander, and then we see a Dragonkin Berserker, Harold Unites the Elves, good job Harold. And then we see a Finn the Fangbearer, keep an eye on him. Then we see our first borderless land, the Dark Boar Pathway. Very cool to see that. You know how I like my lands. Then we see a Morit the Frost and a Calamity Bearer. And in the back, we get ourselves a bird and an Elf Warrior token. Now I'm going to go ahead and attempt to make piles here. However, if you uh, know me, I am very poor at pile management. So I'm just going to go ahead and shuffle the cards around, shake my head, and move on with pack number two. All right, so in pack two, we already see a little duplication with the Elf Warrior in the back, but we uh, look through our comments here and don't really see much. So we've got a snow-covered island, another Herald Unites the Elves. He's pretty amazing. Love that guy. Next up, we got a Tundra of Fermoil. Then we see a Freya's Retribution coming in here, followed by, you guessed it, Finn the Fangbearer, number two. Then we see Arnie Broken Brow coming in here, followed by a Cardor Doom Scourge, and then a Tundra Formal again. So we see a little duplication. Ta da, there it is. And then we see ourselves a bird with that elf in the back. Then we move on to pack number three. So drop me a comment below and let me know if you like the voiceover. All right, next pack, taking a look at our comments. Nope, just kidding. Okay, nothing much here. Snow Covered Plains, followed by a Renar the Ever Watchful coming in from the Commander set. Then we see a Cosmos Elixir, good hit. Then we see, ooh, there we go, the Borinclax Monstrous Raider. Now we saw this in our set booster box, but this time we're seeing it in foil. So very cool to see that. And I think I'd talk about it a little bit more. And finally, I'm ready to put it down, but there's Finn again. All right, Finn number three, three packs, three Finns. Happy days are here again. Uh, we got Eskis Chariot coming in here, Kitty Cat Maker. Uh, and then we got Harold, King of the Skimfar, followed by a Glorious Protector in Borderless Foil, and then Tybalt and a Berserker. So I'm going to take just a second here to sleeve up the Vorinclax, because uh, it is over $30. I'll put the price in the overlay now. And moving on to pack number four. So again, just going to skim through the comments here. Nothing noteworthy there. I'm going to get a snow-covered swamp. And we're going to move into Sertlin Elementalist. Followed by a Doomscar. Decent hit. And then we see a Runeforge Champion coming in here from the main set. Uh, Doom Scourge again in Showcase. And then Egon, God of Death, coming in here in Showcase as well. Then we see a Svela Ice Shaper. Followed by a Rise of the Dread Marn in Extended Art Foil with a dragon. Uh, treasure token in the back. All right, sliding into pack number five here. Struggling to get it open. It happens. There we go. All right. Looking at our commons and uncommons here. I don't think we see much in this particular pack. 
Stained to Stroke, Elven Bow, Sent the Worthy, Snow Covered Swamp, followed by a Canopy Tactician, a Righteous Valkyrie, a Pyre of Heroes. Then we see another Svela Ice Shaper. And a mythic Allred God of the Cosmos coming in here for an, in showcase. Then free of the Judge of Valor, followed by an Elvish Warmaster. So uh, I think elves are going to play an important part in Dominaria. So uh, this might not be a bad set if you are lacking elves to pick up elves. All right, halfway through the box now. Looking through our commons. Don't really see anything of super value here. There we go, shifted in the frame. Snow-Covered Swamp, followed by the Blood Sky Massacre, and an Old Growth Troll in extended art, uh, Radine God of the Worthy, and Freya, Judge of Valor again, and then Sur Surfalar Realm Eater, and then Maja the Protector, followed by a Rally the Ranks in extended art, and a Zombie Berserker with a human on the back. So that officially marks the halfway point through the box. So now we're opening up pack number seven here. I don't know why I'm looking at commons. There's not much in here that we would be looking for. All right, we're going to see ourselves a snow-covered plains, followed by an Aethervile Valkyrie from the commander set, then a Cosmos Charger, a Tegrid God of Fright, which is best known for the lantern on the back. Such a fun and annoying card. Then Harold, King of Skimfar, and Tyvar Kell, another uh, elf favorite. Make your make elves out of thin air. Uh, Inga, Rune Eyes, a showcase. Then Sigrid, God Favorite, coming in here. Not the greatest of rares, in showcase foil. Uh, and then we see ourselves a cat and a human soldier token. All right, sliding into pack number eight here. We're going to start things off with a Sculptor of the Winter. I'm finally going to skip through the commons again. Replicating Ring, decent hit here, over $4. Then we get ourselves a Snow-Covered Mountain, followed by Tales of Ancestors from Commander, Cyclone Summoner, Battle of the Frost and Fire, Ice Shaper again, and we get ourselves a Blight Step Pathway in Borderless. Love it. And then Vega the Watcher, followed by a Quakebringer in Borderless uh, Mythic here coming in in foil. Very nice to see that. And then we see a Demon Berserker, followed by an Elf Warrior. All right, moving right along here. Arachnoform, Alpine Meadow. Don't write off the uh, the non-basic lands in this set. Some of them, I think, could go up eventually. So we got ourselves a Snow-Covered Mountain, followed by a Wolverine Riders from Commander, then another Elvish War Master, then a Dream Devourer, followed by Doom Scourge, and God of Storytelling, decent hit here in Showcase. Then we're going to see uh, Nefari Betrayer King, and then a uh, foil extended art mystic reflection. Good looking card. Then a shapeshifter and an elf. Unfortunately, the mystic reflection uh, has lost significant value since the set was released, uh, but still very, uh, just, just a stunning card visually. All right, so moving into pack 10, ice tunnel. All right, snow covered forest, hero of Breton Guard from Commander. Then Reckless Crew. Doomscar, followed by Finn. There he is again. <laughs> Yay. And then Ovar, the All Form. Very cool to see this. Uh, this is part of uh, a list slot for one of the sets, uh, I think, Streets of New Capenna. Uh, then we get uh, God of Storytelling again, but this time in foil. And then we get Coma's Coil uh, with a human on the back. So decent token here. All right, moving on to pack number 11. For those of you that stuck with me, here's your ASMR pack crinkle. Looking through the comments here, not much noteworthy here, but I am going to take an awkwardly long pause on the snow-covered forest for some reason. Then we go to a battle for Bretengard, a Tyrite Sanctum. Then we're going to see a Kaya the Inexorable, uh, Planeswalker showing up here in foil. 
Then we see King of Skemfar, followed by the Blood Sky Sire, uh, rare in Showcase. Then we see King of Skemfar and God of Battle showing on up here. So Halvar, decent hit uh, in Showcase Foil. And then we get an Icy Manolith and a Treasure Token. Now we're going to move on to our last pack of Kaldheim for now. Uh, I do have that other box that I'll probably be opening in a few months. Maybe I'll wait until it gets a little bit cooler. Uh, so we got a Warhorn Blast, followed by a Comus Faithful, a Squash, then a Frost Peak Yeti, followed by a Volatile Fjord, a Dragar's Helm, Provoke the Trolls. Then we see a Snow Covered Island, uh, Waking the Trolls. An Eradicator Valkyrie in Borderless. A Righteous Valkyrie. And then Vega the Watcher with Kasima, God of the Voyage. Nice little vehicle god there. And why not? Finn the Fangbearer in the last pack. That's our fifth first foil. Then we got our Dark Boar Pathway in foil, which turns into the Slitherborn Pathway. And then in the very back, we got a Shard and a Human Token. So I'm going to go ahead and organize all the cards and be right back with the MTG box analysis. Everything's been sorted and inventoried. Now let's get into the MTG box analysis. Let's start things off with a look at the Kaldheim set distribution. The set contains a total of 398 cards. In the collector booster packs, we can see 108 cards in non-foil, including one high-numbered rare from each of the primary colors of magic. We can also see 15 rare and mythic multicolored cards, all of the borderless, all of the showcase, the one Phyrexian, and the 40 extended art. In foil, we can see every card from the main set except those five rares, number 374 to 378, as these rares were never printed in foil. You can also not see any of the 20 themed cards, numbered 379 to 398, as these are exclusive to the set and theme boosters. Also featured in collector booster boxes are 16 cards from the Kaldheim Commander set. Two of these are mythics and 14 of these are rares. This chart shows the non-foils that we saw in green, the foils we saw in orange, and the set in gray as our baseline. This box contained four of the multicolored rares in non-foil, as well as three borderless, 21 showcase, and one extended art card per pack for a total of 12. In the foil space, we had a pretty even distribution with 12 to 16 cards for each of Magic's five primary colors. We also saw adequate coverage of the multicolor, artifact, and non-basic lands. We saw two foil borderless and seven foil extended arts in this box. In this collector booster box, we saw 36 unique non-foil cards. Based on the data, we can see that this box contained two of the five high-numbered rares, one blue and one green as well as 23% of the borderless cards and 30% of the extended art cards in non-foil. In the foil space, we saw 129 unique cards. Our highest category of coverage from the main set was white with 41%. We also saw 10 of the snow-covered lands, 15% of the borderless, 41% of the showcase cards, and 18% of the extended art cards. Now let's take a look at coverage by rarity. In the non-foil space, we saw 50% of the 12 uncommons we were eligible to see. We saw 26 of the 69 rares, giving us 37% coverage. And finally, we saw 4 of the 25 mythics, providing us with 16% coverage. In the foil space, we saw just over half of the commons, 38% of the uncommons, 20% of the rares for 17% coverage, and 4 of the 42 mythics for 10% coverage. In total, these 12 packs contain 46 rares and 8 mythics. Out of the 180 cards we saw, 3 of the foils and 6 of the non-foils were duplicates. The only card in this box that we saw a playset of was the Showcase Finn the Fangbearer. Now just remember, there's only 12 non-foil uncommons in the set, so in 12 collector packs, there's bound to be some duplication. Let's take a quick look at the potential value of the Kaldheim set. This chart shows all the cards in the set by dollar category in their non-foil prices. Six of the cards are valued over $10, 18 of the cards are valued over $5, and 59 cards are valued over a dollar. The remaining 295 cards are valued under a buck. 
In total, the 378 cards we're eligible to see have a total market price value of $486.99. However, this does not factor any of the FOIL price multipliers, and as you saw during the opening, FOILs still have a good multiplying factor in this set. The chase card for this set is the Phyrexian Monstrous Raider. The non-FOIL version is valued at $26.60, but the foil version is valued at $111.78. But I only factored the $26 non-foil value into that $486.99 total. Now let's take a look at the value that we saw in this box, starting off with the non-foil space. We didn't see any non-foils valued over $10 in this box, but we did see two cards valued over $5. They were the Righteous Valkyrie at $7.21, and the Blight Step Pathway, valued at $7.83. We also saw 12 cards valued between $1 and $5, but the remaining 28 non-foils were all valued less than $1. In the foil space, we only had one big hit, which was the Vorinclax Monstrous Raider, valued at $34.48. We did also see the Righteous Valkyrie, valued at $5.43, the Dark Board Pathway at $5.65, the God of Storytelling at $7.39, and the God of Battle at $8.62. And in the $1 to $5 range, we saw 16 cards. The remaining 111 foils were all valued less than $1. So how did this box perform? Well, I purchased this box from Woot.com for $148.77, not including tax. Today we opened up 12 packs with 15 cards each, seeing a total of 180 cards. The six Commander cards added $2.61 in total value, which is why I didn't feature them prominently in the box analysis. The 12 tokens added another $8.12 in value. The 42 non-foil cards added $54.12 in value. And finally, the 132 foil cards added another $112.36 in value. This brings the grand total value of the box up to $177.36 in card value, which is a gain of $28.59 over the price I paid. This equates to 119% of the box price being returned in card value. For those of you interested in knowing the value of the cards over a dollar, here are the numbers. 38 of the 192 cards, including tokens, were valued over a dollar and have a combined value of $145.77. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more MTG box analysis. Until next time, do something amazing.